again as I continue from reading from the book of the Old Testament uh, of the Holy Bible. Today I'm reading from the book of Job. I'm continuing the reading of the book of Job from chapter 31 onwards. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? For what portion of God is there from above? And what inheritance of from the Almighty on high? Is not destruction to the wicked and strain punishment to the workers of iniquity? Does he not see my ways and count all my steps? If I have walked with vanity or if my foot has hasted to deceit, let me be weighed down in an even balance that God may know my integrity. If my step is turned out of the way and my heart worked after my eyes, if any blot is cleaved to my hands, then let me sow and let another eat. Yes, let my offspring be roped out. If my heart has been deceived by a woman, or if I have laid wait with my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind unto another, and let others bow down upon her. For this is a heinous, heinous crime. It is an iniquity to be punished by the judges, for it is a fire that consumeth the destruction, and will root out all my increase. If I did despise the cause of my manservant, or my maidservant, when they contended with me, what then shall I do when God riseth up? And when he visited, what shall I answer him? Did not he that made me in the womb make him? And did he not one of fashioners in the womb? If I have eaten the poor from their desire, and caused eyes of the widow to fail, or have eaten my morsel myself alone, and the fatherless has not eaten thereof. For from my youth he was brought up with me, as with the father, and I have guided her from my mother's womb. I have seen many I have, if I have seen any perish for want of clothing or any poor without covering, if his loins have not blessed me, if he were not warm with the fleece of my sheep, if I have lifted my hand against the fatherless, when I saw my help in the gate, then let my arm fall off from my shoulder blade, and my arm be broken from the bone. For destruction from God was a terror to me, and by reason of his highness I could not endure. If I made gold my hope, or have said to the fine gold, thou art my confidence, if I rejoiced because my wealth was great, because my hand got much, if I beheld the sun when it shined, or the moon walking in brightness, and my heart has been secretly enticed, or my mouth has kissed my hand, this also were an iniquity to be punished by the church, for I should have denied God that is above. If I rejoiced at the destruction of him that hated me, or lifted up myself when evil found him, neither have I suffered my mouth to sin by wishing a curse to his soul. If the men of my tabernacle are not, O oh, that we had the flesh, we cannot be satisfied. The stranger did not lodge in the street, but I opened my doors to the traveller. If I covered my transgressions as Adam, by hiding my iniquity in my bosom, did I fear a great multitude, or did the contempt of families terrify me, that I kept silence and went not out of the door, or O oh, that one would hear me, behold my Desire is that the Almighty would answer me, that my adversary had written a book. Surely I would take it upon my shoulder, and bind it as a crown unto me. I would declare unto him the number of my steps. As a prince I would go near unto him, if my land cry against me, or that Pharaoh is likewise thereof complain, if I have eaten the fruits without money. God, the honours thereof to lose their life. The tissels grow instead of wheat, and copper instead of oil. The words of Job are ended. Chapter 32. So these three men ceased to answer Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. Then was kindled the wrath of Elihu the son of Barak and the Buzite of the kindred of Ram. Against Job was his wrath kindled because he justified himself rather than God. Also against his three friends was his wrath kindled because they had found no answer and it had condemned Job. Now Veli, who had waited until Job had spoken, because they were elder than he. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was kindled. And Elihu, son of Barakal the Buzite, answered and said, I am young, and ye are very old, wherefore others are afraid, and dare not sow you my opinion. I said, they should speak, multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Great men are not always wise, neither do the aged understand judgment. Therefore, I said, hearken unto me, I will also show my opinion. 
Behold, I waited for your words. I gave ear to your reasons. While ye searched out what to see, I attended unto you. And behold, there was none of you that convinced Job or that answered his words. Let you should say, We have found out wisdom. God trusted him down, not man. Now he has not directed his words against me. Neither will I answer him with your speeches. They were amazed. They answered no more. They left off speaking. When I have waited for the speak not, but stood still and answered no more. I said, I will also answer my part. I will also show my opinion. For I am full of matter. The spirit within me constraineth me. Behold, my belly is as a vine which has no vent. It is ready to burst like new bottles. I will speak that I may be refreshed. I will open my lips and answer. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person. Neither let me give flattering titles unto any man. For I know not give flattering titles. In so doing, thy maker would soon take me away. Chapter 33. Therefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches. Hearken to all my words. Behold now, I have opened my mouth. My tongue has spoken in my mouth. My word shall be as the brightness of my heart. My lips shall utter knowledge clearly. The spirit as God has made me. The breath of the Almighty has given me life. If thou can answer me, set thy words in order before me. Stand up. Behold, I am according and to the wish in God's stead, I also formed out of clay. Behold, my terror shall not make thee afraid, neither shall my hand be heavy upon thee. Surely thou hast spoken in my ear, and I have heard the voice of the wise saying, I am clean without transgression, I am innocent, neither is there iniquity in me. Behold, he findeth occasions against me, he counteth me for his enemy. He putteth my feet in stocks, he marketh all my thoughts. Behold, in this thou art not just, I will answer thee. That God is greater than man. Why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth not account to any of his matters. For God speaketh once, yes, twice. Yes, man perceiveth not. In a dream, in a vision of night, when the steep sleep falleth upon man, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose, and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit, and his life from perishing by the sword. He is chastened also with pain upon his back, the multitude of his bones with strong pain, so that his life abhorred by, and his soul dainty me. His flesh is consumed away, that it cannot be seen. His bones were not seen, stick out. As his soul draweth near unto the grave, his life to the destroyers. If there be messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness, then he is gracious unto him, and says, Deliver him from going into the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresh, fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray unto God, and he will be favorable unto him. He shall see his face with joy, for he will render unto man his righteousness. He looketh upon men, and if any say, I have sinned, and perverted that which was right, and it profited not me not, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Lo, all these things work with God of times with man, to bring back his soul from the pit, to be enlightened with the light of his living, to mark well, O Job, hearken unto me, hold thy peace, and I will speak. If thou hast anything to say, answer me. Speak, for I desire to justify thee. If not, hearken unto me, hold thy peace, and I shall teach thee. Furthermore, Elihu answered and said, Hear my words, O wise man, keep ear unto me, ye that have knowledge, for the ear trieth words as mouth tasteth meat. Let us choose to us judgment. Let us know among ourselves what is good. For Job has said, I am righteous, and God has taken away my judgment. Should I lie against my right? My wound is incurable without transgression. What man is like Job, who drinketh up scorning like water, which goeth in company with the workers of iniquity, and walketh with the wicked men? For he has said, It profiteth the man nothing that he should delight himself with God. Therefore hearken unto me, ye men of understanding. Far be it from God that he should do wickedness, and from the Almighty that he should commit iniquity. For the work of man shall he render unto him, and cause every man to find according his ways. Surely God will not do wickedly, neither will the Almighty pervert judgment. Who has given him a charge over the earth, and who has despised the whole world? Disposed the whole world? If he has set his heart upon man, if he gather himself, his spirit and his breath, all flesh shall perish together, and man shall return again unto dust. If now thou hast understanding, hear this. Hearken to the voice of my words. Shall even he that hateth right govern? And wilt thou condemn him that is most just? Is it fit 
say to a king, Thou art wicked, and to the princes ye are ungodly, how much less to him that accepteth not the persons of princes, nor regardeth the rich more than the poor, for they are all the work of his hands. In a moment sh they shall die, and the people shall be troubled at it, pass away, and the mighty shall be taken away without hand. For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings. There is no darkness or shadow of death, where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. For he will be not be a poor man, more than right, that he should enter into judgment with God. He shall break in pieces mighty men without number, and set others instead. Therefore he knoweth their works, and he overturneth them in the night, so that they are destroyed. He striketh them as wicked men in the open sight of others, because they turned back from him, and would not consider any of his ways, so that they caused the cry of the poor to come unto him. And he heareth the cry of the afflicted, and he giveth quietness. Who then can make trouble? And when he hideth his face, who then can behold him? Whether it be done against a nation, or against a man only, that the hypocr hypocrite reign not, let the people be ensnared. Surely it is meet to be said unto God, I have borne chastisement, I will not offend any more. That which I see shall not teach me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. That which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. Should it be according to my mind, he will recompense it, whether thou refuse or whether thou choose, and not die. Therefore, speak what thou knowest. Let men of understanding tell me, and let a wise man hearken unto me. Job is spoken without knowledge, his words were without wisdom. My desire is that Job be tried to the end because of his answers for wicked men. For he added rebellion unto his sin. He clapped his hands on others, multiplied his words, my God. Elihu spake moreover and said, Thinkest thou this to be right, that thou saidst, My righteousness is more than God's? But thou said, What advantage will it be unto thee? And what profit shall I have if I be cleansed from my sin? I will answer thee and thy companions with thee. Look unto the heavens and see. Behold the clouds which are higher than thou. If thou sinnest, what dost thou against him? And if thy transgressions be multiplied, what dost thou to him, unto him? If thou be righteous, what givest thou him? Or what receiveth he of his hands? Thy wickedness may he hurt a man as thou art. The righteousness will profit the son of man. By reason of the multitude of oppressions, they make the oppressed to cry. They cry out by reason of the arm of the mighty. But none say it, where is God, my maker, who giveth songs in the night? Who teaches it more than the beasts of the earth? Maketh it wiser than the fowls of the earth? There they cry, but none giveth answer, because of pride of evil man. Surely God will not hear vanity, neither will the Almighty regard it. Although thou sayest thou shalt not see him, yet judgment is before him. Therefore trust thou in him. But now, because it is not so, he hath visited in his anger, yet he knoweth it not in great extremity. Therefore the job opened his mouth in vain, he multiplied words without knowledge. Chapter 36 Elihu also proceeded and said, Suffer me a little, and I will show thee that I have to speak on God's behalf. I will fetch my knowledge from my power, ascribe righteousness to my maker. For truly my word shall not be false. He that is perfect in knowledge is with him. God is almighty, and despiseth not any, he is mighty in strength and with He preserveth not the life of the wicked, but giveth right to the poor. He withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous, but with kings as they are on the throne. Yes, he doth establish them forever. They are exalted, but if they be bound in fetters, and be holden in cords of affliction, then he sheweth them their work, and the transgressions they have exceeded. He openeth also the we to discipline and command that they, they return from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity, their years in pleasures. If they obey not, they shall perish by the soul, they shall die without knowledge. But the hypocrite is in heart, heap of wrath. They cry not when he bindeth them. They die in youth, and their life is among the unclean. He delivereth the poor in his affliction, and openeth the ears in oppression. Even so, would he have removed thee out the strait into a broad place, where there is no straightness, and that which should be set on table should be full of fatness. But thou hast fulfilled the judgment of the wicked. Judgment and justice have taken hold on thee, because there is wrath. Beware lest he take thee away with a stroke. Then a great ransom cannot deliver thee. 
will he esteem their riches no not god nor all the forces of strength desire not the night and when people are cut off in their place take heed regard not iniquity for this has thou chosen rather than affliction behold god exalted by his power who teacheth like him who has enjoined him in his way or who can say thou hast wrought iniquity remember that thou magnifies work which men behold every man may see it man may behold it afar off behold god is great we know him not neither can the number of his years be stretched out for he maketh the drops of water they pour down rain according to the vapor thereof which clouds do draw up and distill upon man abundantly also can any understand the spreadings of the clouds or the noise of his tabernacle behold he spreadeth his light upon it and covereth the bottom of the sea for in for in by them judgeth he the people he giveth meat in abundance with clouds he covereth the land and commanded it not to shine by the cloud that come between the noise thereof showeth concerning it the cattle also concerning the wheat at this also my heart trembleth chapter 37 and is moved out of his place hear attentively to the noise of his voice and the sound that goeth out of his mouth he directed it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the ends of the earth after it the voice roareth he thundereth with the voice of his excellency and he will not stay them when his voice is heard God thundereth marvelously with his voice great things the thing which we cannot comprehend for he said unto the snow be thou on the earth likewise to the small rain and to the great rain of his strength he sealeth up the hand of every man that all men may know his work then the bees go into the dens and remain in their places out of the south cometh the whirlwind and the cold out of the north by but by the breath of frost is given and the breath of waters is straightened also by watering he beareth beareth the thick cloud he scattereth the bright cloud and it is turned round about by his counsels that they may do whatsoever he commanded them upon the face of the whole world in the earth he causeth it to come whether for correction or for his land or for mercy hearken unto the son job stand still consider the wondrous works of god does thou know when god disposes them and causes the light his of his cloud to shine does thou know the balancings of the clouds the wondrous works of him which is perfect in knowledge how the garments are worn when he quieted the earth by the south wind has thou with him spread out the sky which is strong or as a molten looking glass teach us what we shall say for him for we cannot order our speech by reason of darkness shall it be told him that i speak if a man speak surely he shall be swallowed up and now see men see not the bright light which is in the clouds but the wind that passeth and cleanseth them fair weather cometh out to the north with god is terrible majesty touching the almighty we cannot find him out he is excellent in power and in judgment plenty of chastity he will not afflict men do therefore fear him he respected not any that are wise of heart